And hello again, everybody. I'm Snapper Lancaster, welcoming you to another edition of the Central Alabama High School Sports Show. Well, as you all know, this is championship time of the year, end of the school year. The spring sports are crowning a lot of champions. We've had a lot of them crowned. And this week, we're at Springville High School, and the Tigers came away with a title this week. And we're going to be talking with their coach and some of their players. You'll have to stick around and see who it is. We're not going to tell you ahead of time, but we'll be talking to a championship group in a little while, plus a Another group of athletes and a coach. But sitting in on the opening with me, I've got the assistant principal here, uh, Jeff Smith. And uh, Jeff, awfully good to see you. Good to see you too. And as we uh, get this interview started, tell us a little bit about your background and what has led you to your position thus far here. Well, I've been here quite a while, so um, I guess um, I originally came from Kentucky, and I've been here for 31 years. My wife is from here. Um, Coach basketball, helped with football, girls softball, and uh, um, been the vice principal for the last 17, 18 years. Man, and of course, like I, I think you told me you watched still the varsity basketball, basketball coach. Yes, sir. So I can't talk to you about a transition from coaching into the administration because you're still doing both of them. Right. I've been very fortunate. Yes. And, and talk about the challenges that that brings. I'm sure that it does bring some along with that job. It does, um, but uh, I guess I've done it so long, it's like um, just normal, but uh, the time consuming sometimes, trying to uh, find time for, uh, for the basketball team while you might be having to do some administrative duties, things like that. But uh, I've been very fortunate to be here at Springville because of the administrations I've worked under and uh, with our coaching staffs that we've had here. We, We've always worked very well together. Communicate, you know, we share a lot of athletes, so um, it's imperative that we work together. And, you know, being, being a coach, too, you have, uh, you, you have seen the situation where uh, a lot of the sports now are sort of individualized uh, to a degree, and, and I've seen it, and I've been in this business a long time. I've seen coaches that actually don't like their athletes if they've got stars in a sport. They didn't, some of them aren't particularly crazy about them participating in others. And then on the other hand, you've got the, the coaches and, and all that want the kids to participate in as much as they can. Which, which way do you sort of feel about that? We're on the uh, play all the sports you can while you can. Um, uh, for this year, I think eight of my uh, possible 11 varsity players are playing football. Um, we had um, this, this senior class and a lot of the people you're going to speak to tonight, um, those athletes all play multiple sports. Um, they either play basketball, football, or basketball, baseball. There's track. There's, they're very active, and we encourage that. Again, we share the athletes. Um, we're not really big fans of just playing one sport because – I just don't think that's in the best interest of the student athlete, especially at the high school level. Right. Well, uh, another thing that I would ask you too is talk about the growth in this area here. Wow. Through the years, because you've been here how many years now? Thirty. One. Say Thirty-one. Yeah, thirty-one. When you got here. Two a. Two a. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was that. That's a that's a big question. I mean, it's it was like uh, we were two a for quite a while, creeped up to three a. And we're doing uh, very successful at the 3A level. And then a lot of people started coming out here in a five or six year span. And with those young uh, children that they uh, brought with them, got through with elementary and middle school and hit the high school, it shot us up from uh, 3A straight to 5A. And I think that was about 12 or 13 years ago. Um, right. And that was a huge jump. But a lot of people came out here. It had, to, I think, it had to do with the community of Springville. It had to do with our schools. Our schools have uh, been, uh, our students represent our schools very well academically at the state and national level. So 
there was a lot of reasons for people to move to uh, Springville. Man, I, I tell you what, that growth is continuing. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't know, like you said, it takes quite a few years to make a jump from one level to another. It, it does. But it, because what it does, it's all um, driven by the number of students you have. Yes, and sir. Like you say, the mom and dads move in, they bring their kids. Who knows? Uh, it may be in, within the next five years, Springville could easily be a, a 6A school. Well, it it's yeah, anything's possible because we've already made the jump from three to five. So, um, and this is a good school system. So, we definitely see why people want to move out to this area. Um, we understand that, and um, I know there's there's a lot of discussion about even more expansion, school wise, building wise, right. so that we can accommodate the growth that this community is experiencing. Well, I tell you what, uh, and I and I hesitate to use this word, but I can. Coach, it's awfully good to see you. I know you've got that administrative hat, too. Yes, sir. But uh, we, we'll be experiencing um, uh, introducing a championship team here in a little bit, and that's always good for yes, it is. It was. But uh, want you to know we look forward to coming out here, and I have for a long time, especially living down the road there in Trustful. So congratulations on your career thus far, yes. and may you have many more years of service to you. You're ready to hang it up. Thank you. And we'll look for more championships from the Tigers. We would love that. Thank we'll, you very much. Okay. Thank you, Coach. And we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. Our first guest. Don't you go away. We'll be right back. Land of Frost Premium is America's best-selling one-pound daily pouch, now available in 12 delicious flavors, including new flavors of muskeet turkey and cotto salami. High school athletes across the country ask for Land of Frost by name. These great items are available at your local grocer, including Piggly Wiggly, Food Giant, Western Supermarkets, and many more. Land of Frost also makes other varieties of lunch meats, including deli shaved bristro and sub sandwich kits. Land of Frost is a proud sponsor of youth sports as well. At Andrew Sports Medicine, we partner with our patients, trying to help them overcome the obstacles that keep them from achieving their goals. This practice aggressively pursues victory over injury, over pain, over limitation, over, over anything that's gonna keep you from being the best you can be. It starts with our non-surgical physicians who are trained in sports medicine and orthopedic injuries. Uh, we have specialists in sports medicine with shoulders, elbows, and knees. We have hip specialists that do uh, only hip surgery, including arthroscopy, minimally invasive resurfacing, and total hip replacement if needed. We have joint replacement surgeons, we have spine surgeons, we have surgeons that specialize in foot and ankle surgery, and in hand surgery. So just about all the specialties of orthopedics are covered in injury sports medicine. What makes the great surgeons great is their volume of experience at making decisions, whether that's intraoperative decisions, post-operative decisions, pre-operative decisions, the decision to operate on somebody or not operate on them. And so our volume here breeds good decision-making that gives us an edge in terms of making decisions for our patients, which ultimately is a lot of times the difference between success and failure. The teams, the players, the parents have confidence in us because they know we're gonna communicate with them, we're gonna create a plan unique to that athlete or that person and we're gonna get them back to their, their thing and as quickly and as safely as we can. At Andrew Sports Medicine, our mission is to partner with our patients and to help them succeed and, and achieve victory. Whether you're a weekend warrior, a grandparent with a shoulder problem, or a professional athlete, you get the same care, the same high-level technology, the same uh, aggressiveness that we would in a professional athlete, and we, we treat everyone the same way. None of us like to lose, we're all very competitive, and we're not gonna lose against their illness or their injury. And folks, welcome back. Our first uh, guest of the afternoon, coach guest, that is Coach Cody Wilkson. He's the boys' soccer coach here at Springville. Coach, good to see you. Thank you, sir. And as we start out this interview, tell us a little bit about your background and what has led you to be the boys' soccer coach here at uh, Springville. Um, I grew up here in Springville. I graduated uh, from Springville and then um, 
my second year teaching, we started the program, and um, Coach Smith said, hey, if we're starting a boys program, we need a coach, you're coaching it. And I said, okay. Uh, and so we just kind of started from there, that was five years ago. Really? Well, now let me ask you this. Did Are you a soccer player or uh, another I did, sport? I did not grow up playing soccer. They didn't have it here. Right. Um, but I grew up playing basketball and coaching basketball my first couple of years. Uh, and so they're similar. Um, and so did a lot of research, went to a lot of coaching clinics, and um, just we've had some good players. Well, t- uh, talking about this year's team, what kind of team did you have? What kind of record did you have this year? Uh, we finished the year 18-7. and seven. Um we knew that we'd be really experienced. We had nine seniors uh, coming back, uh, and they've been playing since their freshman year. Um, so we knew that we'd be talented. We knew that we would have a lot of experience, but we didn't know how it would all gel. I mean, it takes a little bit of luck every season. Um, right. And so we just kind of – we gelled really well together um, this year, worked hard, fought for each other. And, and, and talk about uh, being a young coach in, in this sport. Talk about the growth of this sport because and, and, uh, it, it seems like it's growing daily. And, and one of the main reasons I see soccer uh, experiencing part of that growth is a lot of the players that moms and dad used to play football, they're steering away from that now. Mm-hmm. The uh, uh, injuries that you have and especially um, – uh, the ones where you get extended, um, um, maybe damage, you know, that, yeah. that uh, I think that's been a positive, and um, I don't mean it to sound negatively for football, but it's been a positive because a lot of the young athletes are, uh, to me, going towards mm-hmm. soccer, both men and women. The, the youth movement has been big, especially out here, like in our community, we have a lot of kids playing. That was what's big for us, is that this senior group has been playing together, you know, for 10 years uh, plus for most of them. Uh, but you're right. I mean, I coach football here, too, and you see a lot of kids just playing soccer, and it's growing. Uh, we had a new team join our area right before the season started. Uh, another school declared that they wanted soccer, and I think there's another school in the county um, that's declaring it. So it's just it's growing, and um, I know how it is starting a new program. You know, five years ago, it was just making a bunch of phone calls, trying to schedule games, send a bunch of emails, trying to say, hey, uh, we want to come play you and figure out um, – what we got here, and um, it's just well, it sounds like you're you're also learning as you go, being a young yeah, coach in absolutely. the business, and I don't mean that in a negative way. And and uh, the one thing that that you're probably seeing too is more participation. Are you mm-hmm. one of these coaches? And, I, and believe me, I just call it like it is, and I ask coaches this: Do, do you recruit the hall? Some you see some athletes <laughs> that uh, maybe aren't playing at all, mm-hmm. or maybe uh, you you know they're not real happy with the sport that they are playing might like a change. Any kind of, um, uh, you know, um, information you could give them that might make them want um, to try your sport? I teach 7th and 8th grade, um, and so I see a lot of the, the kids at the, as they're younger. And if they're not playing sports, you know, hey, you know, get out. There's somebody that can come and run. And there's a lot of running in soccer, so it's not Absolutely. for everybody. Right. Um, and uh, But, yeah, if, if there's a kid that um, – wants to get out there and try it we, we welcome them. Um, we had we started a JV program this year uh, and so between the JV and the varsity teams we had over 60 kids come to tryouts Wow! Um, and so that was incredible just from where we started a couple years ago when we had you know 22 kids come to tryouts um, and I just think uh, it's the, the like you said the popularity of the sports just growing and growing um, and a lot of them get together and they play FIFA online and um, I guess, you know, watch some some games at home. Well, I I know um, I've got a a grandson and a granddaughter, both that are pretty good at soccer, and one or both of them may end up getting a scholarship Mm -hmm. at it. I know I went to one of their matches because I'm an old football, baseball, Mm -hmm. you know, basketball guy, and so I've had to learn a little bit about this to know what I'm watching. But one of the things I told him, I I asked my son, I said, boy, they're going to be so give out in the second half that they can't finish this game. But the thing about it is, the, I guess this is one very important word for your sport, pace. Mm-hmm. That The guys know that it's not a half game, it's a whole yeah. game. So you can't burn it all up right. in that first half. But yet, you still have to be aggressive and play the way you know you can play. And we have a, uh, a pretty tough off-season conditioning program. We start uh, conditioning uh, right after I finish up 
football. Uh, so we start in October, November, and, and go all the way until the season starts. Uh, and we're running hills and sprints and miles, and the boys love it. Um, but uh, we have a lot of depth, too. And in high school soccer, it's a little different than club and international where there's unlimited substitutions. So, right. you know, they go as, as hard as they can, as long as they can, and then we'll get somebody else in there. And that was one of the things about this team, too. We had a lot of depth, um, and that, that helped. We were talented and we were deep. Uh, where if somebody needed a breather, we could put somebody in and not have the drop-off that you typically have. Yeah, let me, let me ask you this, this question. It's just a gender question, and I won't lay on it or anything like that. But uh, a lot of young ladies is participating in uh, soccer. Do you have soccer here for the yes, girls? Yes, we have a girls' program, and the girls' program has been very successful as well. They've made the playoffs all five years, uh, going into the third round uh, previous couple of years. Uh, and they're starting a, a JV program this year, um, we believe, as well. So it's continuing to grow out here. Well, now, and then, now to get back to your team, it sounds like you had a pretty good season. I think uh, whatever coach it is, whatever sport it is, uh, I think the, the, the terminology that I always use with coaches is that you hope that your uh, team peaks come playoff yeah. time. Yeah. And of course, there's a lot of factors that work into that. Injuries play with it, you know, to a degree. But I think that's every coach's wish mm -hmm. is that they're playing the best they can when you get to those playoffs. Yeah. And having said that, your team had a pretty good year yep. this year. Now, looking forward to next year, because mm -hmm. the good Lord willing, you'll be the boy soccer <laughs> coach. What what uh, lies ahead? Have you got a lot of positions that you're going to have to I mean, change and refill? We're, we're losing nine seniors. Then we had a, a foreign exchange student that uh, came in from Germany. So we're, we're losing 10 guys. Um, and so that's going to be hard to replace. We'll be young, um, but having the JV program this year, uh, we had seven freshmen that we're hoping can come in and contribute um, some way um, or somehow. Um, but it's it's tough to replace experience. Oh, um, that, that's that's true. I think with any sport. Yeah. But I think, um, uh, like you said, it sounds like you've got the enough participating mm -hmm. to, and in your program yeah. to where there shouldn't be a, a a lot of drop off. We hope not. And then, and then a lot of that, of course, uh, comes on the shoulder of the coach. What you can <laughs> do with those kids coming up. But it sure. sounds like you've got the program in good shape. You've got a lot of kids participating in it. And that's what it's all about for you, the coach. Yes, so I wish you all the luck in the world. And uh, like I said, I'm. I'm sure you're looking for that. You hadn't had no first championship, right? No, we made it to the uh, championship game this year. Really? Okay, yes, sir. so you come that close. Yes, sir. Well, I tell you what, um, experience, uh, even the younger players, they'll yeah. come back with more experience and sure. that playoff experience. Wish you all the luck in the world. Thank you okay? so much. Folks, we're going to take a quick break. We come back, visit with four athletes that have been, was very instrumental in the outstanding soccer season these young guys had. We'll be right back. At Andrew Sports Medicine, we partner with our patients, trying to help them overcome the obstacles that keep them from achieving their goals. This practice aggressively pursues victory over injury, over pain, over limitation, over, over anything that's gonna keep you from being the best you can be. It starts with our non-surgical physicians who are trained in sports medicine and orthopedic injuries. Uh, we have specialists in sports medicine with shoulders, elbows, and knees. We have hip specialists that do uh, only hip surgery, including arthroscopy, minimally invasive resurfacing, and total hip replacement if needed. We have joint replacement surgeons, we have spine surgeons, we have surgeons that specialize in foot and ankle surgery, and in hand surgery. So just about all the specialties of orthopedics are covered in injury sports medicine. What makes the great surgeons great is their volume of experience at making decisions, whether that's intraoperative decisions, post-operative decisions, pre-operative decisions, the decision to operate on somebody or not operate on them. And so our volume here breeds good decision-making that gives us an edge in terms of making decisions for our patients, which ultimately is a lot of times the difference between success and failure. The teams, the players, the parents have confidence in us because they know we're gonna communicate with them, we're gonna create a plan unique to that athlete or that person and we're gonna get them back to their, their thing and as quickly and as safely as we can. At Andrew Sports Medicine, our mission is to partner with our patients and to help them succeed and, and achieve victory. Whether you're a weekend warrior, a grandparent with a shoulder problem, or a professional athlete, you get the same care, the same high-level technology, the same 
uh, aggressiveness that we would in a professional athlete, and we, we treat everyone the same way. None of us like to lose. We're all very competitive, and we're not going to lose against their illness or their injury. And this will be your premium right here. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to say, I combined home and auto with State Farm. Saved 760 bucks. Love this guy. Okay, does it bother anybody else that the mime is talking? Freaky. Bundle home and auto, and you could save 760 bucks. That's 760 very good reasons to call Alan Gurdow in Trustville today. And folks, welcome back. As you can tell, I got four outstanding young athletes, soccer stars here at Springville. And uh, sitting closest to me, Chase Galloway, a senior. Sir. Midfielder, right? Yes, sir. All right, then John uh, Leppard. And you are a senior midfielder as yes, well. Sir. Alex Barnett, a senior cornerback. Or, yeah, that's cornerback. Right? Center back. Center back. Center back. That's close. close. I told you I, I wasn't that sharp on this. Caleb, let's see, uh, senior and you're forward. Yes, sir. All right, guys, but before we get into um, talking about this season and the experience you had, all of you guys are seniors, and so, Chase, we'll start with you. What do you um, hope to do? You hope to go off to college? Where are you going? What do you um, uh, hope to be one day, maybe? Right. Well, I hope to, uh, hope to go to Jeff State for a couple years and uh, just get some classes out of the way, and I'll – Probably play club ball, and just uh, probably meet up with some of these guys, play around a little bit, but um, not really. I mean, I went to a uh, UAB camp this past weekend just to uh, get my name out there, and so just waiting on if I get some offers or not to college. But right now, I'm just going to take it easy. Well, do you, do you, uh, when you uh, go to school, what kind of courses are you going to take? What What do you hope to do maybe one day? Uh, I hope to go into athletic training, something like that, because I want to base my career around uh, being around athletics because I love it, um, kind of being around soccer too. I might coach a little bit. Well, that's well. what I was going to say next. Yes, do you think somewhere down the road you might be the coach? I don't know if, if I can replace Coach Wilkerson <laughs> here, do as good as him, but – I do want to be involved in soccer and uh, coach a little bit as well. Well, good for you. Good for you. Okay, John, how about you? I'm going to Auburn next year for a degree in forestry. I'll pray for you. No. Roll time. <laughs> no, yeah. no, I guarantee you couldn't go to a better place. It's an outstanding it's a good school. And uh, forestry. Yes, uh, have you ever thought maybe somewhere down the road that you might be forestry, but uh, maybe coaching some kids? Or? I, I'm going to miss the sport. So, I mean, there's no way you can get away from it. And let me ask you, uh, Chase, real quick, and then I'm going to ask John the same thing. Do you participate in any other sports? Uh, no, just, just okay, soccer. Okay, just soccer yeah, all yes, year round then Yes, sir. for you. Okay, how about you, John? Soccer all 12 months of the year. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, because uh, uh, the coach was talking about one of the aspects is uh, the training that you have to do mm -hmm. because it is a demanding sport physically, that's for sure. Alex, how about you? What do you hope to do? I am going to Auburn as well. I'm actually going to be rooming with him. Oh, really? And I, uh, I'm going to be studying physical therapy. Okay, so uh, staying in athletics or, mm -hmm. or some form of it. Uh, do you ever see yourself as maybe trying to, to coach somewhere oh, down yeah, the road? Yeah, I, de I definitely want to coach. Do, do you eventually. play any other sports? I do not. Okay, and one thing I'm learning about you guys when, from talking to other athletes, a lot of you are year-round. You, are, you mm -hmm. have a passion for the sport. Uh, Caleb, how about you? I'm going to West Alabama next year to play soccer there as well. Really? Okay. And I'll be studying sports management to become a coach in the near future. Oh, hey, that'd be great. All right, so Chase, we'll start with you on the way back. One of the, one of the most important aspects of, of a team being successful or not is team chemistry. Talk about the chemistry that you and, and your fellow players had this year, what you expected of yourself, what you expected out of them. Well, um, I mean, we've been friends for our whole lives, and that always helps. We've grown up playing soccer together, um, and that's a huge part of that's a huge part of soccer is having that team chemistry. I think that's how we were able to be so successful. But um, yeah, we've grown up together, so we we know each other, we know how we play, and we were able to play together as a team better. All right, now, now guys, I found out a lot about your your soccer expertise, and uh, I know two things about you. Before we sit down, I know that you're good in the classroom because if you didn't qualify there, you don't make it to the soccer field, right? And you're outstanding soccer players. So here's what I want to know, and uh, Chase, we'll start with you. 
after a hard week on the books, hard week out there playing soccer and everything, what do you do to unwind and just uh, in your free time to relax? Man, just sleep as much as you can, really. Because <laughs> I mean, your body's hurting after running so much and just uh, leaving it all on the field, basically. So sleep, study, and then go to school, go to practice after school. I mean, Well, you're right, because that, that studying is just as important as the is. playing. Because yes, if you don't take care of the books, you don't get there. Oh, and Coach Wilkerson, <laughs> he holds us to that. <laughs> well, that's his job, too, yeah. part of it. John, how about you? I go home, play the guitar usually. Really? Just settle down, you know, relax. All right, now, now are you a fast picker or are you a country no, picker? I'm a country picker. Hey, that, that, I hear you, boy. So that, that, that relaxes you a little bit, oh, huh? Yeah. How about you, Alex? Uh, just like Chase said, just sleep as much as possible. It's, really? Yeah, just, yeah, or getting that rest that yeah. you don't get when you're exactly. uh, playing and in the, in the classroom, your brain's working mm -hmm. more than that body. How about you, Caleb? Uh, I do wrestle a lot, but I'm also watching soccer videos as well. Like, it's hard to get me away from soccer. So Really? Um, okay, well, I, it sounds like all you guys have a passion for it. Now, the, uh, like I said, we've talked about the classroom. We've talked about uh, your expertise and your passion. What I want to know is are athletes, and that's exactly what you guys are, uh, have been known to be a superstitious bunch. In other words, we feel like we've got to do this, we've got to do that, or we can't play our best, or we won't do as good. So with that thought in mind, Chase, do you have any superstitions or anything that you have to do you feel the same way in order for you to be successful? Well, um we're all, we're all captains right here, and so I just uh, every time that we've all four been up to uh, do the captains things, we've always we've won, except for I mean, except for the last game, but we've won, and so basically just us being together and uh, going up there uh, to shake the coach's hand and everything like that. That's what really uh, helps us, just all four of us being together. Oh, okay, yeah. uh, and how about you, uh, John? One of the things that like I think helps us the most is coach. When we ride the bus to away games, he will not let us talk, and I help. I think that helps us like get concentrate in the zone on what the, the game, game ahead of time. Um, uh, talking about that, especially at away games, are you one of these guys you feel more comfortable playing at home in front of the home cooking, so to speak, or is it easier to play away because there's there's pressure to win every match? But mm -hmm. sometimes the pressure at home to win is greater because you want to satisfy all those friends and parents that have come to see you. And sometimes they, they don't travel that well for whatever reason. So does that take a little pressure off or does it bother you? Our school dra like, travels very well. Like when we were in the state championship game, that's the most people we'd ever had in Huntsville. So no matter what, our team's got to be ready home, away. You just got to do what you got to do. Okay. How about you, Alex? Uh, before every single game, I get tape and I put it around my wrists and put a Bible verse on it. Really? Yeah, and every playoff game, I did it in both hands. I felt like that helped. You really? Uh, yeah, really. Okay. And you think it, uh, up here, you think it helps, right? Well, I, I guess. Okay. Well, I mean, that's good. I'm not mm -hmm. being critical. Cause believe me, I've done some things worse than that. <laughs> and that's not worse. That's the wrong term to use it, which sounds mm -hmm. like me. snappy. You don't know what you're doing. Uh, Caleb, how about you? Um, well, normally when we're um, walking out to get in our positions right before the kickoff, um, I go to my position and John will come up to me and we have a handshake that we do before the game. Really? Just a special little handshake? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. I'm going to tell you the reality of the thing, okay? And then you'll think about it and you'll say, well, he's probably right. None of that stuff really makes a big difference. It helps us up here. But what helps most is what you guys do when you get out there playing, right? Sure, and yeah. then it just all comes together. Right. Well, guys, I know you're all seniors. I wish you all the luck in the world and whatever endeavor it is. And if you end up back in the sport of soccer because you love it so, I hope you do. And if you don't, i got a feeling you're going to be very successful in whatever you do. Last question, and we'll start with you, Chase. In your young life thus far, who's been the most inspirational person or persons? In my young life, uh, I don't know. That's a hard question. Um, I would say Coach Wilkerson's been super <laughs> inspirational to me. Um, coming up as a freshman, as a young kid, he helped me um, get out of my comfort zone and um, to be the best player I can be. Okay. All right. How about you? It would have to be my dad. Uh, he, uh, he teaches me to be really hardworking in everything I do and to do it to the best of my ability. Okay, John. I would have to say Coach, but also as well my dad too because, like, he taught me that if you want something in life, you got to go get it. Yeah, well, that, that's a lot of truth in that. Chase? Definitely Coach Wilkerson. I've been on the team since since we started. I was an eighth grader on the team, and he, 
he was the one that took me out of the practices and everything since I couldn't drive. And so he basically helped me grow in soccer. So I wouldn't be here without him. Okay, guys. All right. Well, listen, uh, first thing is we're off to college. And I and, uh, wish you all the best for you. Maybe you'll end up in some soccer role down the way. Maybe you might be an, end up being president or something. You just never know. <laughs> but good luck to you, and uh, congratulations on a great season, Thanks, okay? Man. Thank you. We're going to take a quick break. We come back. Uh, another guest. Don't you go away. We'll be right back. The next time you need electrical work, whether it be commercial or residential, you need to call Huffman Electrical Contractors. A company that's been in business for over 35 years, they've served clients not only locally in the Birmingham area and all over the state, but have clients outside the state of Alabama as well. Whether it's a new building or remodeling an older building or home, they can handle the job for you. Once again, that's Huffman Electrical Contractors. The number to call is 205-661-5005. That's 205-661-5005, where at Huffman Electrical Contractors, a satisfied customer is always their number one objective. And folks, welcome back. You know, in the opening, we talked about a championship team. Well, we've got a championship coach here because there was definitely a championship one. It was baseball, baseball coach Jonathan Ford. Coach, first of all, congratulations for the championship. i tell you what, uh, and if you don't say anything different, you're telling me a story because I know it's just as important to coaches to win championships as this, them athletes to win it. It's still a special thing. Uh, is this your first? Yes, sir. Well, it is, it well, is my good first. Good for you. Congratulations. That Thank makes you. it even sweeter. Yes, sir. And as we start this conversation off, Coach, tell me a little bit about your background and what's led you to be the baseball coach here at Springville. Yes, sir. I graduated high school from Hoax Bluff, Alabama. Really? Okay. In 1994, where I played baseball for Coach Mike Estes. And um, just he was a super – a uh, role model for me and, and an inspiration for me. And uh, just coming through that program, there's six, seven state championships there and a lot of success. And and I just had the opportunity to go play in junior college. And just through all of those um, situations just led me to uh, wanting to continue to be a part of it and then hopefully to – uh, you know, make a difference in, in some of these guys' lives in doing so. Well, I'll tell you what, now, how many years is it that you've been here? Well, I've been here uh, teaching for 18 years. I've been the head coach for 12. Really? Yes, oh, okay. Sir. So, first championship. Yes, sir. And, uh, boy, they're always special. So now all you've got to do is defend and win number two <laughs> next year. Yes, now, sir. having said that, Let's talk about this year's uh, group because they're the ones that, that got it done. And uh, when you get to talking about your team, tell me a, a little overview of your team uh, offensively, defensively, and your pitching staff this year. Sure. First off, the, the biggest key, I think, for these guys is five of them have been starting since they were a freshman and one since he was in eighth grade. And then a couple others started as sophomores. And so they've had three years of experience. So – just these guys being able to to get that high level of competition at such an early uh, age really, I think, helped in their development and their growth to get to this point. And and we were known for uh, our ability to swing the sticks, and that, that was kind of the word around the state. And it started last year in the playoffs as we made a run into the third round and, and really um, – I, we had 13 home runs in the playoffs last wow. year. And, and mm -hmm. so so word was out coming into this year, knowing we had that many kids returning. And so – but, yes, yeah, so we, we really – had the, had the ability to to score runs and and sometimes score them in bunches and yeah. so and which really helps as you were asking about the pitching staff that really Absolutely. that really helps in in that but we had a couple guys that that uh, were the main starters last year who were also the main starters this year that were Braden Hughes and and Ivan Cornelius those were our uh, uh, guys that were our, our our I guess game one and game two starters throughout the, the area and through the 
through the playoffs as well. And then we had another uh, senior, Max Harrison, who was our game three guy, and Chase Isbell was our closer. And so, and and for two years, that's really how it's been. So we really knew what we were getting each time we we stepped on the field. And so. of course, uh, it, it helps for a, a pitcher standpoint to score a lot of those runs, but also it helps to have a defense behind you that if you allow, uh, don't allow another team to score much, it's going to make winning even easier. And, and you're absolutely right. And I believe that's one step that we took this year from last year was the, uh, the defense uh, really improved from last year, just, just more consistent all the way around. And, and like you said, not only scoring the runs, but with the pitchers knowing they got guys behind them, it's going to make a play. Well, the one so. thing that we're talking about, too, is you had a few seniors on this year's team. Right? Oh, yes, sir. I had eight. Uh, well, and that's, to me, that's a lot for one year. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, that means next year you're going to have to fill some holes. And uh, if everything goes well, you'll be able to do that. But, but looking ahead, uh, the, the guys coming up, what, what do you think um, lies ahead for you and your group next year? For the group next year, the dynamic definitely changes. Um, we have basically about three, three starters, uh, guys that played a lot of time coming back, and, and uh, those will probably be our, our biggest bats. But the guys that will be replacing this year's group – uh, are going to be very solid defensively and, and, and going to be able to pitch a little bit. Uh, so that will be the change uh, for next year. It's going to be more of a, a pitch and play defense type of group rather than rather than score a bunch of runs. Right. So. Well, like you said, though, here's, here's the deal about not scoring. If the other team don't score, you got a better Abs opportunity absolutely. to win that, win that ball game. And um, I know you being the head coach, um, from my talking to other head coaches, you're responsible for your schedule. Yes, sir. Now, here's what I, I ask a lot of coaches because I'm curious about it. Uh, some coaches, uh, you, there's three stages for me. You, you can play tough competition. You can play competition that you're equal with. Then you can play some competition, what I, I call morale boosters, mm -hmm. that you ought to win. And uh, it doesn't mean that they're patches. That's not what I'm saying, but you know what I'm talking about. So with that thought in mind, what is uh, your philosophy when it comes to that? And I know a lot of it has to deal, first of all, with what you are going to be expecting out of this coming season. But uh, how do you um, uh, sort of place your schedule and what do you put the most emphasis on? My, for me, when, when, when it's time to schedule, I definitely look at the group that, that, that I have coming and, and what, what level we want to try to reach. And, and especially over these last couple of years, we, we, didn't, we didn't try to back down from anybody because uh -huh. we knew what we wanted and, and where we needed to try to be. And we knew to to be the best, we were going to have to play the best, right. you know. And and since we've set that standard, that's not something I want to change. I, I don't, regardless of what group I've got coming next or what I think, we're we're going to continue to try to play. Teams. In other words, if it's not broke, don't fix yes, it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so it sounds like you're going to have some uh, talent coming back, and. Um, uh, for lack of a better way to put it, you've talked about it. You've had that firepower the last mm -hmm. two or three years. It may not be to the degree, and it may. You never know uh, how it's going to be. But one thing you, you feel like, I get a, a feeling that, you, that you're going to be um, leaning a little more on pitching maybe until mm -hmm. you find out exactly what you got. So I guess from that standpoint, you got some experience coming back on that staff because it really all starts with uh, how you shut other people down sure. to start with. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, so I do have three guys um, coming back that got to pitch in the championship series this year. And so to be able to pitch in that situation this year means that I have some confidence in them. And then they're going to be the go-to guys next year. And so I'm hoping that experience is what's really going to propel them to have success next well, year. Well, now let me tell you, I've been around sports a long time, and I'm sure you have too. And there's this funny thing that goes along with being a champion. It's called this little bullseye on your back. Mm -hmm. That now you're the ones that the people want to knock off. That they're going to play their best to beat the defending champions, and that uh, that can be um, uh, have be a two-edged sword. But it can also 
be an advantage too because those other people are trying so hard. There's such thing as trying a little too hard. Yes, sir. So what, yes, sir. what we're hoping for you, and I'm sure that uh, you're hoping the same thing, is that your team next year grows and grows into the best that they can be, whatever that is. And, Coach, first of all, I want to congratulate you on your championship. Yes, May it be the first of many. Yes, sir. And I know you uh, being a coach that, that, that you feel the same way. But awfully good to meet you. Congratulations on that championship, and let's go get another one. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. We're going to take a quick break. We come back. Uh, five gentlemen, very instrumental in the championship run they made this year. We look forward to talking with them. We'll be right back. And this will be your premium right here. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to say, I combined home and auto with State Farm. Saved 760 bucks. Love this guy. Okay, does it bother anybody else that the mime is talking? Freaky. Bundle home and auto, and you could save 760 bucks. That's 760 very good reasons to call Alan Gurdot in Trustville today. At Andrew Sports Medicine, we partner with our patients, trying to help them overcome the obstacles that keep them from achieving their goals. This practice aggressively pursues victory over injury, over pain, over limitation, over, over anything that's going to keep you from being the best you can be. It starts with our non-surgical physicians who are trained in sports medicine orthopedic injuries. Uh, we have specialists in sports medicine with shoulders, elbows, and knees. We have hip specialists that do uh, only hip surgery, including arthroscopy, minimally invasive resurfacing, and total hip replacement if needed. We have joint replacement surgeons. We have spine surgeons. We have surgeons that specialize in foot and ankle surgery and in hand surgery. So just about all the specialties of orthopedics are covered in injury sports medicine. What makes the great surgeons great is their volume of experience at making decisions, whether that's intraoperative decisions, post-operative decisions, pre-operative decisions, the decision to operate on somebody or not operate on them. And so our volume here breeds good decision making. That gives us an edge in terms of making decisions for our patients, which ultimately is a lot of times the difference between success and failure. The teams, the players, the parents have confidence in us because they know we're gonna communicate with them. We're gonna create a plan unique to that athlete or that person and we're gonna get them back to their, their thing and as quickly and as safely as we can. At Andrew Sports Medicine, our mission is to partner with our patients and to help them succeed and, and achieve victory. Whether you're a weekend warrior, a grandparent with a shoulder problem, or a professional athlete, you get the same care, the same high-level technology, the same uh, aggressiveness that we would in a professional athlete, and we, we treat everyone the same way. None of us like to lose. We're all very competitive, and we're not gonna lose against their illness or their injury. And folks, welcome back. And as you can see, I got five outstanding young athletes, and these are championship athletes, baseball champions, and uh, uh, class 5A guys. First of all, congratulations on a terrific season. Sitting closest to me, we got Brandon Daniels, brand new, a senior, and an outfielder. Yes, sir. Okay, and then Bradley Cole, senior, second base. Yes, sir. And Brant Brown, a senior outfield. Yes, sir. And standing up, we've got Chase Isbell, senior sure. shortstop. Did, did I hear the coach say you did some pitching? I uh, close. Clo yeah, bit. that's important. That's it. But you're shortstop first, sure. right? Oh, okay. And uh, then Justin Bromley, a senior catcher. Yes, sir. That's pretty important, too. You get to call all them pitches and sort of see what's going on out there in that field, right? All right, uh, guys, and we'll start with you, uh, Brandon. Uh, being a senior, going into this senior season, what did you expect out of yourself and also your teammates? I expected a, a deep run like we made it. Uh, I expected going to state and hopefully winning it. Uh, senior year, you got to lay it out on the line. So. I was hoping for it. We when it. Uh, you said you're hoping and, and ready to do it, how did in your junior season? How did y'all end up? Did you uh, was your team very what good or? Yes, good? sir. Our team we uh, returned a lot of starters. Uh, we made it to the third round. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I remember the coach saying that was something. the yeah. that's the first time we made the third round in uh, five A. But it was a it was a season last year for sure. It was a good one and hoping for the better this year. Well, I think you got about as better as you can get. Uh, Bradley, how about you? Second baseman, 
Yes, and so uh, what were your <clears throat> expectations for you and, and your teammates? Uh, coming into this year, we uh, – last year we made a little bit more errors than every, uh, you know, than we did this year. So we came in hoping that we did a little bit better. Uh, as far as the team, you know, we came in uh, – Anything but a blue map was a disappointment for us. So yeah. we wanted we wanted it all, and that's what we got. Well, you know, there, there's a thing, God, uh, when you become confident in yourself and you know you're playing the best that you can play, you expect good things to happen. Now, Brent, how about you, um, outfielder? Uh, did you expect uh, the team to, to go all the way? Yes, sir. Like, the guys show up every day and work hard, and it would be anything less for us not to win. We expected to win. We always played as hard as we could, and we did any, would do anything we could to win no matter what. So it was a strong suit from your standpoint uh, for your team, was it the um, ability to score runs? Yes, sir. And so if you ever got behind, you didn't put a whole lot of pressure on yourself because you had the firepower, right? What was your final record? 34-7. Uh, and seven. Oh, my goodness. Yes, sir. That, that's cleaning up pretty good. Uh, now, Chase, you said you're the shortstop and the closer. Yes, sir. All right. Um, Short, what, which do you like best, shortstop or closer? I'd rather play shortstop. Really? But, but now, now the I'll closer, close you got to – I'll come in and close any time. All right, let me ask you, what's, what's your uh, biggest asset in your pitching? Is it speed or – It's definitely speed. It's definitely speed. All right. I like to ask somebody if we've got definite speed. Did you enjoy brushing people back if they got too close to play? Would you throw inside every once in a while? I threw inside all the time. Well, please tell me you threw inside and sort of low, where you wouldn't hit anybody in the head. Uh, you tried. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you this: Did it just? Would you have been disappointed with anything less than a championship, considering oh, the team y'all had last year and the expectations you had for each other? I would this have been year? upset big time because even from last year, I've been saying this whole time that we're going to stay and we're yeah. going to. This well, is our year. Because confidence yeah. plays a big part in it too. Uh, Justin, uh, did anything about this season surprise you, or did you expect to be where you were, if not winning a championship, playing for one? Honestly, I expected it last year because we pretty much had the same team this year that we had last year, and I felt like that really if we would have made it past that third round team last year, we would have went all the way. Yeah. We might not have won it, but we would have made it, and anything – a lower than a blue mat would have been a disappointment yeah. this year. Well, you know, and, and like I said, confidence can carry you a long way sometimes, and uh, but ability carries you further. Yes, and and y'all had that ability first. All right, now, I, you know, I, I know you guys are good athletes and you're, and you're good in the classroom, and, boy, your baseball, you're phenomenal when you end up being a state champion. But uh, what, and, and we'll start with you, Brandon, uh, what do you do to relax? Because, I mean, the, the pressure of the classroom, the pressure of the baseball diamond, you, you want to get loose sometime and have no pressure. What do you do? Uh, to get loose, I take a deep breath and just look at the situation ahead and take a hands-on approach to it and try to relax and keep myself calm most of the time. Yeah, okay. Uh, Bradley, how about you? Uh, you know, I just rely on my friends, you know, my teammates – continue to do what we do, man. Yeah. And like you said, um, y'all have been pretty good the last two or three years and continue to get better. And, and the championship proves that you're, you're as best as you can be. Brent, how about you? Just stay loose. Uh, just my teammates. We're like, we've been together since we were little kids. So we just joke around a lot with each other. We kid around a lot. There's a lot of joking going on, a lot of cutting up. Just we stay loose around each other all the time. But one of the most important aspects, I think, and I can gather this from – uh, talking to all of you, that pretty much y'all all feel the same way. You're a confident bunch. Yes, yes sir. And there's yes, a difference sir. in being confident and cocky, right? Yes, sir. All right, tell me what that difference is, Chase. Well, we went out there and we knew what we, we could do. We didn't go out there just, like, t showing off and showing people, telling them all this stuff. But we went out there and we performed, and we just we knew what we were able to do. That's pretty much what we did. Yep. Justin, how about you? Just feel like our team chemistry was at an all-time high because we've been playing together since we were four or five yeah. years old. Now, and, and all of you are seniors, right? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, and we'll start with you, Brandon. Where are you off to school? I am headed up to Lee University up in Tennessee to play baseball and study exercise science. I've got a grandson that's going to UT Martin oh, to play baseball yes, up there in Tennessee. Uh, how about you, Brandon? Uh, well, the original plan was to go to Jacksonville State. 
Uh, I wasn't going to play baseball, but after the last game, I'm thinking about uh, trying to go off and play somewhere at community college. Yeah, well, that so. would be terrific. Uh, Brent, how about you? Uh, I'm going to the University of North Alabama to play baseball. Really? Okay. I've got a grandson that's up there, too. Uh, that's, a, that's a great school. Uh, all right, how about you, Chase? I'm going to Sanford University to play baseball. Oh, okay. Uh, and Justin? I plan on going to University of Auburn to get a major in engineering. Okay, well, all right. Now, having said that, and a, a great, uh, Auburn's a great university um, to get an education, do any of you guys ever think that you might want to coach high school one day? Yes, I, it might be a different approach to coaching. Uh, I want to try to be a strength and conditioning coach and try to strengthen all athletes, maybe not just baseball, hopefully the whole spectrum. Okay, good luck. <laughs> yeah. that'd, that'd be good. Uh, how about you, Brad? Uh, maybe well, one day I could go and volunteer. I don't really think I would uh, like to be a teacher or anything, like go up and do yeah. that, but maybe I could come down and help out a little bit. Yeah, well, it takes a lot to be a teacher. You've got to have that want to, and it's not for everybody, and you're right about that. You can be involved somehow and not have to go to that point. Brant, how about you? I don't know if I could coach a full team at all, but I would, I would definitely help out with like individual aspects of the game. Like what position do you play? Outfield. Out, yeah, outfield. So would you like coaching the outfield? Or? I would probably just coach hitting, honestly. I would be a hitting <laughs> instructor. I don't know if I could even like – right, Who's the, the biggest outfield. home run hitter on the team? Well, I think all of us might be equal. Oh, really? Yes, sir. Uh, how many did you hit? This year I hit two, but last year I hit eight. Really? So. Oh, okay. What happened to that power? I was focusing on more base hits and trying to get my bad numbers up. I tell you what, guys, uh, you can't do much better than you've done. A state championship is, uh, is as good as it gets. And all of your seniors off uh, to college next year, I wish you all the luck in the world. Uh, the last question I got for you, and we'll start with you, Brandon, to this point in your young life, who's been the most inspirational person or persons? My most inspirational people is probably my grandfather and my father because they uh, – they played at a high level of baseball, and I wanted to achieve the same thing as them. Good for you. How about you, Bradley? Uh, it would probably be my parents and uh, my Uncle Randy. They've uh, all pushed me, you know, together and uh, okay. to do the best I can. All right, Brant? My parents and my granddad, they've all pushed me the same way. Good. Always focus on baseball in school. Well, I tell you, they pushed you guys the right way, that's for sure. Chase, how about you? Definitely my parents. They've always pushed me to do the best I can. It's been here for me all the time. and. I had my dad win it back in 92. This made it a little bit more better. Well, that's good. That's good. All right, how about you, Justin? It'd definitely be my parents. They always expected the highest level of uh, confidence out of me, and they expected nothing less out of me. Well, I tell you what, guys, first of all, it's awfully nice to meet y'all. I live right down the road in Trustful, and I – well, I kept an eye on y'all's team. I was wanting to see how well you were. We're not going to do it. I'm tickled to death that I got a chance to come and speak with you guys and even more tickled that you won the championship, okay? And so I wish you all the luck in the world. And, uh, folks, we've had another great show, two great coaches, a lot of great athletes, and we'll do it again next week. But to then, you know what the snapper always says – Bicycle. All right, guys, now you say bicycle. Bicycle. That's championship stuff right there, boy.